G'day, Simon here, Explosive Action. I received a package of movies in the mail as a gift. A whole bunch of stuff here we're gonna take a look at, so let's get into it. Hello? Extra. Hello? Extra. The Mutilator. So before we get into the movies, I've got to tell you where they came from and who sent them. These were all thanks to your good friend of mine, Extro the Mutilator. He has been one of the foundational, for me anyway, uh, movie YouTubers since 2010, uh, at least for me, but I think he's been going uh, maybe 2009, maybe even longer. He's been around since there's been YouTube, put it that way. And he's been talking about films, showing films, showing DVDs, Blu-rays, Laserdiscs, VCDs, and just everything film that whole time. And his style of video has never changed. It's always the hands. The man with the hands showing details about films, talking very in depth about a film, what he thought, if it's good, if it's bad, uh, sometimes talks about the quality of the print, but mainly he's talking about the movie itself and if it's worth your time. Uh, I always enjoy his videos and uh, I think after all these years he doesn't still get enough viewers it's a shame I think uh, he needs more viewers and I'm hoping that this video might get a few subscribers his way so if you want someone to talk to you about movies way more in depth than I do and more than I'm going to right now then go check out Extra the Mutilator his link is in the description below give him a subscribe Go watch his videos, comment on his videos, give him the likes. Uh, it keeps him encouraged. I know that is a fact. So let's get into the things that he sent me here. The idea with this box started about three years ago um, and it started with VCDs. He bought a giant bulk load of VCDs and in that bulk load was a bunch of Cat 3 films. He's not so much into Cat 3 films. He was mainly there for the Kung Fu. Um, but there was some Cat 3, there was some duplicates already had that started this box. He just kept throwing in these spares that he didn't want to give to me at some point. Then COVID happened. That shut down shipping. He couldn't ship from the US to Australia. Then he just kept adding to the box. Just kept adding and adding. And then eventually we could ship to Australia again. And the prices had gone not just up, but up. This package here cost $85 US to send this amount here 85 US dollars to post which is an outrageous amount through USPS and it took five weeks to arrive so don't think that's going to be happening anytime again soon but uh, as well as the things that we talked about the VCDs which I didn't know the titles but I knew that's what was coming he clearly threw in some other things which is what he does so I've got a few DVDs here and one VHS we're going to start with the DVDs the ones here I'm going to talk about first was uh, a present on top of this box we were talking about um, curating these were just things he wanted to give me the dollar store experience we don't have Dollar Trees here these kinds of Dollar Tree films we don't have those kinds of releases really so he gave me the experience and man the first one I was very excited about because I was gonna buy it anyway at some point uh, this is your move starring Luke Goss Luke Goss he became an action star uh, after leaving uh, whichever the boy bands he was in, I can't remember which one he was in, uh, but one of the horrible boy bands, and he became an action star. And he's done quite a few, and I think he's fine. He does a fine job. He's kind of like a WWE action star, just does the action movies. And this one's called Your Move, and he's got a giant gun on it, and it's also got Robert Darby in it, which is really cool. And Patricia de Leon, I don't know who that is, that was the back of it. But uh, this looks kind of like a vigilante film. Uh, David, that's Luke Goss, a successful New York businessman, embarks on a desperate journey to find his wife and daughter after he witnesses their brutal attack and kidnapping in Mexico on a video call. That's a very modern age version uh, of uh, a vigilante movie, starting with a Zoom call. Uh, unable to, re to rely on law enforcement, he searches to find the kidnapper and avenge the violence that befell them. So he goes full death wish, and it's, look, I reckon this is going to be good fun. And this, I, I can't believe the luck you guys have in the States. I mean, these dollar movies. I would be there every other day. My entire collection would just be Dollar Tree items. So there you go, your move. Next one he picked up for me. 
door to the other side. Uh, definitely a Dollar Tree horror movie here. Incredibly tense with one hell of a climax. I like a good climax. That's what she said. Uh, some people should be left alone. Letting them in was his, his way out, but he was not alone. Tim lives as a shut-in, except for visits from his psychologist. He has successfully cut himself off from the outside world when he learns that he will be evicted from his sanctuary that he has created. The very fabric of his sanity begins to tear. Strange things to begin to happen as the pressure of re-engaging with the outside mounts. It, is he imagining these events as stress wrecks havoc on his fracturing psyche? Or is, is uh, reality grimmer? Is he haunted by a sinister presence which preys upon those trying to help him? That was a kind of difficult one to read. Um, so there you go. It looks like an interesting horror. And don't recognize any of the names in this one, which is a bit of a Dollar Tree thing. And I don't recognize the director. So anyway, there you go, the door to the other side. Could be good. And hopefully it is uh, from 2015. I think it's what it says on the back here. So there you go, door to the other side. Next one is just called Boo. What a great name. From the executive producer of Insidious. So that that's interesting to me. When I first watched the Insidious uh, part one and part two, I, I was quite underwhelmed. Uh, everyone was banging on about Insidious films and uh, they gave me what I, they gave me less than what I was hoping for, but about what I expected. You know, modern, sort of trendy, big cinema horror. But on, on rewatch and then watching parts three and four, I actually enjoyed them a lot more. Um, I think I just sort of went with the flow and I kind of enjoyed them. So, boo, you have been chosen. I like that uh, ghostly but bloody uh, costume there. That's really fun. Uh, one night, a struggling family's true test arrives, a strange Halloween game left on their doorstep that, as legend has it, leaves a curse on those who choose not to play. Unfortunately, that's the choice they make, and evil spirits of all kinds are ready to make them pay. Sounds like a screwed up version of Jumanji. That could be good fun. Uh, Voltage Pictures, they do a lot of Steven Seagal films, so <laughs> that wonder if he makes a cameo. I'm sure he doesn't. Um, starring nobody again that I particularly know and directed by somebody I've never heard of, Luke Jaden. Uh, no idea what films he's done, but perhaps I've seen some of them. And uh, yeah, there you go. So that's Boo. That one sounds kind of fun. Uh, this one, I have a feeling he might have shown this on his channel because um, the cover is certainly um, something that I recognize. Family Possessions. With uh, That's a pretty cool cover for a modern artwork there. Hands all over the, uh, the girl that's got the... Uh, Dead eye, white eyes. They've inherited one, uh, much more than just a house. Okay. Uh, a young girl, Rachel Dunn, inherits the mansion of her estranged grandmother. Rachel and her family move into the house to start a new life, but once there, strange, unexplained occurrences begin to happen. Rachel uncovers a secret that has been hidden from her, and she soon realizes that some family secrets should remain buried. Oh, there you go. Okay, and this one's got. Um, any names I reckon? There's some faces there. I recognize this guy. I don't know his name though. Uh, even if I find his name in the back here, I'm not going to know who that is. Um, but uh, there you go. That sounds kind of interesting. And uh, yeah, family possessions, not a Dollar Tree banger. So uh, moving on from those, we got into uh, a couple of uh, martial arts films and Hong Kong films. This first one. This one, uh, I was quite, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see this one. This is called A Kid From Tibet. And I, I love these old Hong Kong DVDs, like the, the physical item itself. Like these, often these boxes were not standard DVD size. Like I'm not sure if this is one of them. Yeah, it is. You can see that it is, uh, they're wider. The whole case itself is just very different, right? It's just a different kind of case. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, there you go. So this is... A kid from Tibet. I can't read anything on the back, obviously, but it does seem like it's going to be fun. Probably an action comedy. Um, yep, take a look inside. That's the simple disc. Another interesting case parts there. No, nothing written on that one. It's got the old AC3. I like it how the Chinese DVDs always did that. The AC3 instead of having to show a Dolby Digital logo. Uh, <laughs> but on this one, they've done both. Well, there you go. Uh, so yeah, there you go. I have never seen a kid from Tibet, but it certainly looks interesting. So cool to see that one. And this one, he explained to me, was sort of the real big present, like the one, the the, the ex most exciting uh, part of the box that he went. And uh, I assume he upgraded this one to another release, and he's given me a former copy of his that he's coveted. Um, 
And it's a German small hard box, which is very cool. Bruce and Shaolin Kung Fu. Uh, or as it's written here, Der Gelb Gorilla. Gorilla. Great cover there with a fake Bruce Lee, uh, which is Bruce Lee. And it's got Bolo Jung, which I'm very excited about. Uh, Cheng Li and Chan Zing, but Bolo. Bit of Bolo. We got some Bolo in the back. Yeah, there's some Bolo. Awesome. And uh, the good thing about a lot of these German releases, if you if you know what to look for and you read the specs, they're widescreen and they're in uh, like decent audio. This one we've got in 235 to 1 anamorphic widescreen, which is fantastic. And amongst the German audio, we have an English dub as well. So not sure if it was supposed to have a Cantonese or Mandarin uh, track at some point, but we've definitely got an English audio here, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, a whole bunch of... Uh, Info on the back there, I cannot read you because it's all in German. Uh, but uh, yeah, very cool. The uh, Bruce Lee and Shaolin Kung Fu on German Mini Hardbox. We'll take a look at the VCDs now. Now there's a couple of a uh, couple of the CDs that he sent that I've not included here. Um, there was one that I already had, and there was two that were let's let's call them gag gifts. They were soundtrack CDs uh, of the. Um, canto pop style i'm not too sure if they were things that he enjoyed but i put them on for precisely 15 seconds and got exactly what i expected from them so they will not be appearing in this update but i will be showing these very very cool movies the first one here is actually um time has passed enough in this three years of things going into the box this one's now not only on dvd but coming out on blu-ray as part of the Shaw scope volume 2 drunken monkey uh, this is an old uh Celestial VCD. Uh, it's a, is it an IVL? Not too sure. It looks like their style, but I can't quite tell. Um, who is it from? Asia Video Publishing. It definitely looks like an IVL kind of uh, disc, though. So this is yeah, Drunken Monkey. I've never seen this one before. Um, it's from director Lau Ka Leung, and uh, is also starring in the film with Wu Jing and, and uh, Yao Yao, Shannon Yao Yao, uh, Chik Kun Kwan, Chang Chan Hua and Lao Wing Kim. And uh, apparently it's got Gordon Liu guest appearance, which is very nice. This is a 2003 VCD. Um, I do buy and watch VCDs. Uh, I haven't bought any in quite some time, but I do enjoy them. I've got a dedicated VCD player and because my TV is, uh, in this cave, is 46 inch, it's not like some gigantic 4K 80 inch TV. They look decent, and on a, if a VCD is made with some quality, I'm not talking like your, your, your bootleg VCDs, but an actual quality VCD, like the ones that uh, the legendary range, they're very good quality, they can look like an early DVD on the best days and that's not a bad thing sometimes so that's what we've got here drunken monkey interesting case i think on this one too i'm gonna pop this one out so sometimes you get a full jewel case inside sometimes you just sort of get these trays most vcds if you don't know are on two discs because these are cds they're like audio cds right cd rom um so you only get the 800 meg capacity at most usually 740 and uh, that's why films had to go over two discs because back then when they made VCDs and the format was MPEG-1 compression which is not very efficient at all but the resolution of a VCD is about the same as a VHS right it's 352 by 288 or 352 by 240 uh, for NTSC which is likely what this one is so there you go drunken monkey and a bit of VCD history there for you the next one here uh, this one looks kind of action comedy to me it's called fun and fury look at that cover kind of fun <laughs> This guy's got a great moustache. Um, this one's got uh, directed by Frankie Chan and starring Leon Lai, Vivian Chow, and Kent Cheung. There's the back of it there. Obviously, I can't talk a great deal about these because uh, the only English is usually a do not copy this disc, uh, which is a bit of a shame. But you can take a look at some of the photos there. We get some martial arts going on there. See a bit of blood. And uh, we see a... Is that, is that a girl with gun? We might have a girls with guns in this, which would be very pleasing to me. There's the discs inside one and two so there you go this one is fun and fury and it is on uh i don't know what label this one's on it's in cantonese and mandarin and presumably will have english subtitles burnt into the image they usually do um but yeah i don't know who put this one out interesting they usually have a label on it 
All right, next one we've got here is uh, Dragon Chronicles. This one's out on a Mi R. I do like the Mi R discs. There's something fun about collecting those ones. Um, this one has got English subtitles. It clearly has it there in uh, blue and white on the front, which is nice. This looks like sort of supernatural kung fu. Uh, the Dragon Chronicles, The Maidens of Heavenly Mountains. Seems to be the full title. Um, yep, looks good. Looks interesting, looks fantasy. Looks, looks way better on the back than it does on the front. This could be like you know, two schoolgirls comedy, you know, talking about tee -hee, he's so funny. Like, you, I, I really shouldn't have done that. But, you know, that's what <laughs> I'm going to help. And this is the VCD. And part two. So there you go, that is uh, Dragon Chronicles. Next one, uh, I've got a couple like this where you get, uh, it should be this way, but it's actually a vertical uh, representation. This one is a universe disc with a Tai Seng import sticker on it. So uh, it's a yeah Hong Kong disc that's been, usually that usually means from what I understand it's been imported into America and they've slapped it on for distribution by Tai Seng. Uh, Haunted Mansion is this one. This looks like a pretty fun horror film there. Not too sure what's going on there. This girl looks kind of spooked out. Uh, we do have some English on this one. Let's see how English the English is. Noticing that her husband, Phi, Anthony Wong, that's a good sign, uh, is stressed to the limit from his policeman job, Chi, that's GG Lai Chi, persuaded him to take a week off with her and move into the vacation house in the countryside. Soon, strange things are happening to Phi, and with the help of a sorcerer, that's uh, Lam Xiong Yi, Chi finally discovers the shocking truth. The house is actually a gateway to hell. Oh, hell yeah. And the demons had taken away Fire's memory and his spirit. Now she has to find Fire's spirit before the ghosts take away her memories as well. There you go. This one looks pretty good. It's a Cat 2B, so it's not quite your, uh, your full-on Cat 3, but it's the level before it, from what I understand. And, uh, yep, there you go. There's disc one and two. And a nice Universe brand disc. I like the Universe ones as well as the Me R. Uh, next one here. This one is such a strange looking cover. I thought it was some kind of like pan pipe disc. You know, you go to the markets and there's some guy, he's playing pan pipes and he's got luggage in front of him and he's selling his CDs. That's what I first thought when I saw this. It's like, oh, it's one of those guys playing pan pipes. No, this is, there's a ghost in the boy's room, which is a great name for a film. This guy's just happily there. He's just, he's drinking his Mountain Dew with a, with a straw. And this guy up here is just showing his underpants. Because Hong Kong, can't read anything on the back. Um, we have a policewoman and we've got, uh, yep, he's topless in this one. Uh, and there's some uh, some bro fist stuff going on. I don't know what this, this is surely got to be some kind of comedy. Um, from B&S Films, hopefully it's not a BS film. There's a ghost in the boy's room. There you go. And uh, disc one. Oh, this is, oh no, she's deconstructed. I think I remember that, yeah, the, the, this one needs a new case. It's a little bit uh, folly a party, so I'll get to that later. The next one here is, uh, he is my enemy, partner, and father-in-law. This is clearly an action comedy. Probably more comedy than anything else. Look at those colors, oof, that's gonna be comedy. Another Mi R disc, and uh, on the back, it looks way more action-y, which is good. Maybe they do that on purpose. It's like this one's cover out so that the lady buys it, and this one's on the back so that the man gets home and is not scared. Maybe that's what they do here, because there's like a gun to her head and she's screaming. Um, again, no English on here, can't read anything about it. Which is a shame, it does have the uh, two discs. Hopefully this one, oh, that one is falling out. Oh yeah, yeah. Might just stop showing the discs, they're all the same. But anyway, branded cases sometimes, which is nice, says me are. And uh, yeah, obviously it is in Cantonese and Mandarin with English subtitles. So the way it works with VCDs, which is why they were so popular and better than VHS in uh, in Hong Kong and other Asian territories, was that um, the films would be mono audio, and the way they would get around, get get away with having Cantonese and Mandarin audio is they would pipe the Cantonese track on the left channel and the Mandarin track on the right channel. Sometimes Laserdisc did the same thing, and then the device would send it through both speakers, whichever one you pick. So it's a it's a pre DVD like we're talking. 1992-1993 way of selecting an audio stream just with the remote just go mandarin cantonese flick between it that's why you need to have proper equipment um, and you need to have the buttons to do it because if you don't 
pick the right track, they will both play at once and you'll have one out of each speaker at the same time. And it's very confusing. But anyway, there you go. This is, he is my enemy partner and father-in-law. Could be a buddy cop comedy kind of thing. Certainly with a name like that. Uh, next one we've got here. Uh, this one is called Till Death Do We Scare? Out through Delta Mac. I've got a few of theirs uh, in on DVD. Um, Fortune Star release as well. Maybe some kind of exorcist thing going on there. He's got his got his cross. There's a little sort of demon-y thing in there in the background. But here he's got flowers and she doesn't look that scary at all. And uh, well, there she is there. And she's got a warped face now. Got some English. Oh my God, it's red on colorful background. This is going to be good fun. Men's radio program Scary Ghost Stories is a flop. Well, it would be with a name like that. Even a three-year-old kid laughs at how funny it is. Regardless of how hard his partner Eric tries to inspire him, they never click. On the other hand, an attractive lady marries three times consecutively to a godfather, get a bit English here, a movie star and a preacher. At the death of her third husband, she drinks heavily to pass the time. Well, we've all been there. Um, and her three late husband's spirits, who live under the same roof as their lovely widow, are worried about her well-being. Oh my god. They decide to find her a companion, Alan, whose radio program is a turn-on to the three spirits. Is a turn-on. Oh my god. They succeed in their scheme, and, and on their wedding day, the three spirits discover that the widow is a jinx to any man who attempts to consummate the marriage. This is mental. That sounds ridiculous. Might have to bump this one up the queue. There's your discs. Wow. Okay, so till death do we scare. Uh, this one, this one's nearly been purchased by me a few times. Uh, this one's been on eBay a few times. I've dealt with a seller before. I've nearly put it in the cart a few times and it's not happened. And this time I'm happy to get it. This is a Cat 3 film. This is a hunting list. Very, very cool. This is going to be some, uh, yeah, well, it's Cat 3. It's going to be ultra violent. It might be a bit uh, dodgy in certain aspects. I don't know until I get into it. Um, again, no English on this one, which is a shame. It's a nice universe disc. And uh, certainly look kind of grisly going on there. Thai Sing import sticker on it. Needs a new front, but and, uh, can't do much about that. Nice Thai Sten Sing sticker, and I've got a crack on the front. So I just leave it the crack. And another loose disc, but there you go. Hunting list. It's a bit of a problem sometimes with these VCD cases is that the the tray for the disc, the spindles, uh, they just don't seem to be as strong as the normal audio CD ones, and the, the can, they can snap. So there you go. Hunting list, looking forward to checking this one out, especially. And this one, the floating body, or maybe it's called OCTB, the floating body? I think it might be. Written on the spine there too, OCTB, the floating body. And it has a giant warning down here. And it's a Cat 3. This article contains material which may offend and may not be distributed, circulated, sold, hired, given, lent, shown, played, projected to a person under the age of 18. Well, we just call that a rated R around here, but um, yeah, that looks screwed up. What is going on there? Uh, is that like a cheese grater machine and that guy's head? I don't know what's going on there, but it looks messed up. And that makes me happy. There's a floating head. And I can't read anything about it, but uh, it is bilingual again. It does have the English subtitles, so it makes me happy. And, and we get to, yeah, just the disc in there again. I won't pull it out. That could be good. Uh, this one, I, I'm only aware of the um, uh, the sequel to this, which is uh, what's that called? Well, anyway, this one's called Pom Pom. The sequel, I think, was called Pom Pom and Hot Hot. I think something along those lines. Um, but this is the original called Pom Pom. I didn't actually realize that that one was a sequel and this is the original, but that's very cool. I don't have either film. Um, that second one's actually kind of elusive to find. Now I've got this one, Pom Pom, which is cool. So I think they're sort of like an action comedy. Police know very well Ha is behind the crime syndicate smuggling and trafficking in drugs. Police also know Ha keeps every detail of his criminal transactions in a book, which is guarded by his mistress. Uh, plain clothesman Beethoven played by John Sum and Achu, his name is Achu, played by Richard Ng, which is, uh, that's Richard Ng, uh, he pees in so many films, are ordered to investigate and crack Ha's crime empire. Police could not have made a worse choice. The duo make a bust only to discover nothing but their own red forces. They want information from an informer only to identify the informer in public. 
they get around to the mistress's hideout only to find her head. Plus, they eliminate all fingerprints by six thumbing around. Six thumbing around? Six thumb? I've never heard that expression in my life. Is that a poor translation or am I just behind the times? Or ahead of the times because this is like from 1992 or something. Um, here you go. Yeah, so another Delta Mac. Pom Pom. I'm actually quite excited to check that one out because I've been curious about the sequel. Uh, this one is called Cop. Cop Unbowed. Cop Unbowed. Is that right? Yes, it is Cop Unbowed. Maybe it's a typo. I don't know. Uh, this one looks slightly more modern by the cover, but I am not sure if that is the fact or not. Another Tai Seng sticker. Do have some English uh, here on the back, so I'll read a little bit on this one. Uh, Lam Long, Alex Fong. Uh, the inspector of Hong Kong's police force was framed and suspended because of his rescue for his girlfriend, Yo-Yo Mung, uh, who has been kidnapped by the mob. After leaving the police force, Long goes to a small island and runs a seafood restaurant for peace of mind. Well, why not? Uh, but the gangster doesn't let him go and have been chasing him for 10 years. One day, a young man, Henry, named Sam, Sam Chan, whose father was killed by Long for some reason, comes back from Australia. Australia! And gets into Long's restaurant in order to find out who the real murderer is. Ooh, okay, that sounds interesting. That sounds sort of cat and dog thing going on there. Uh, okay, interesting. It's like an advertisement on the disc, which is strange. Yeah, they've used the inner cover to talk about other films they sell, I guess, and there's the discs, and there's two of them. Yeah. Okay, there you go. So, yeah, the film art is only on the box. It says it's in HD. It is lies. That is lies, I tell you. It is not in HD. That must mean something else. I don't think HD was even a thing when this disc was made. HD, high demand. Holy diver! I don't know what HD is on this one, but anyway, cop unbowed. Uh, next one here, and uh, the second last of the VCDs we're going to show. This one has a really fun looking artwork. The Musical Vampire. I like a lot of these vampire films, you know, Mr. Vampire and the 27 sequels and related films it's got. Even, look, Old Mate's here again. This is another Mr. Vampire style movie when they de when they dig him out. Um, okay, great cover on that. Nothing, unfortunately, I can read on the back, but um, yeah, Musical Vampire and a Me Are film. Uh, me are disc a uh, cat 2 rating there's the uh, disc hopefully it's in english uh doesn't say anything about it i will oh here we go cantonese english subtitles very good um this one looks like it could be good fun musical vampire and uh yes definitely familiar face down there so very nice and the last vcd we will show um this one has a very busy cover and it's almost a little bit too rude to show but i think we can get away with it this is called tabooed no no tattooed tattooed she killer tattooed she killer look at them boots and uh yeah she's got uh oof, got the machine gun or something going there she got the bullets so she's full female rambo going on there we've got the guns there we've got look at triad kind of thing going on down the bottom there back is looking kind of similar i can't tell you anything else about it though i will also just hope it's got english in it um, and uh, yeah, there's the discs. No cover or anything in there. Tattooed She Killer. I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to get into. And the last one here, and the most unexpected, because I didn't know we even we didn't talk about this format being included at all. This was definitely just thrown in for good measure. A VHS. Never heard of this one. Kill Line. It's a US VHS Kill Line uh, with Bobby Kim. There are some lines you can only cross once released through Hemdale Home Video and uh, yeah the death metal in me is laughing at Hemdale being on that um, a smash and dash thriller action fans will love it well I'm sure I might the fastest feet in the West says the New York Daily News quite possible uh, we got some spine photos there on the other side and there's the back which is a uh, looking kind of kind of fong going on there uh, let's just let's just read from the back here um, Starring Bobby Kim, legendary Taekwondo master, named the fastest feat in the West by New York Daily News, apparently. Kill Line is pure, non-stop martial arts mayhem. After serving 10 years in prison for a $2 million heist he didn't commit, Street Fighter with Joe, Bobby Kim, from the Manchurian Avenger, is released from jail and heads west to clear his name. Learning that his brother's entire family was brutally murdered by thugs looking for the vanished money, Joe launches an obsessive search for the killers. Uh, following clues to Angel Town, he sh is that the same Angel Town from the Olivia Gruner movie? 
Uh, he's soon waging a one-man war of vengeance against the town's corrupt police force and a heavily armed gang of mobsters convinced that Joe will lead them to stolen millions. This is this is action movie plot like number C. Like this is this is this there's got to be like abandoned warehouses and everything in this is going to be great. Uh, packed with explosive hand-to-hand -hand combat thrills, it's a lightning-fisted martial arts action spectacular. Amazing. 1991. There you go. Kill line. You can count the amount of um, US VHS in cardboard sleeves that I've got uh, on both my hands like and uh, it's less than 10 now now this, this might make it number 10 I really don't have many it's not a format I've ever really chosen to collect just uh, just hasn't happened because most of them have had uh, like an Australian release so I get that tape or a Japanese release and I prefer Japanese tapes so American tapes uh, it's not a thing that I've, I've really actively gone searching for but uh, I would say um, good half of mine have come from extra over the years so very cool another one for that collection kill line what a great name um yeah i wonder if this is a vhs relic not on dvd or anything on those lines american pictures film um and uh yeah it seems to be another um kim it's a kim family production here it's produced by robert kim it's written and directed by richard kim is robert kim the same as bobby kim i would imagine so uh, it's 1990 film 1989 film on a 1992 VHS. So there you go, Kill Line. Decided to check that one out. And yeah, that's my little package of films. I realise that for most of you, including me, most of these films are unknown. I'm not here showing you the latest 4Ks and Blu-rays. I'm showing you an extra extravaganza. He's dug deep. He sent me a bunch of obscure VCDs, a strange videotape, a German hard box, and it's all very much appreciated. Like I said at the start, make sure you check the description below. Give Extra a subscribe. Go check out his videos. They are very entertaining, very informative. You will learn a thing or ten absolutely when you watch his films. And uh, yeah, as for this video, that's all. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you did, please like, subscribe. Check out that guy. Check out that guy. I'll see you next time.